All right, so from this point, um, what I'm going to be working with are these circles, right? Because I mentioned that this is a fritted glass pattern. So do you know what fritted glass is? Raise your hand if you would like me to quickly explain what fritted glass is. All right, so fritted glass is basically, um, it's like a, a ceramic that's baked into the glass when it's manufactured. It's like a, a dust... A, a ceram I forget what you call the reduction of the ceramic before it gets baked. But anyway, um, and it gets, it gets baked into the glass when it's manufactured. So fritted glass looks like it has kind of a graphic on it in a way. This is a, a kind of a good picture um, of a basic pattern, right? So just dots, ceramic dots that are, that are baked into it. Um, and it can take many different forms. You know, you can do graphic patterns, different colors. Um, you can do linear patterns or circular patterns. You can do shapes. Um, really, anything that you set your mind to, you can do in fritted glass, just about. So um, it's a very popular thing nowadays. It's kind of expensive, though, so I think we, we tended to use it a lot, and then it sort of started to fall off out of popularity a little while um, but it is a good thing and it's kind of a sustainable prod, uh, product it's just if you're willing to pay for it um, so uh, I'm gonna be doing that with this and if you think about it it's basically just the the same thing we did with our dynamic pattern exercise except we're not subtracting it right we're just gonna make it a surface and then make sure that it um, that it shows up when we render it, okay? And, and we're not gonna get to the rendering part, I think, in this class, but we'll, we'll see about that. So anyway, um, I wanna make this a more dynamic pattern, right? Something that, that um, you wouldn't necessarily see just anywhere. Um, so I'm gonna do a scaling pattern, which is kind of like this. Uh, that's basically a gradient scale, where you scale it um, along the whole thing. But I'm going to do mine from, from one corner to the other, or whatever order the points are reading, I can work with. Um, additionally, I'm also going to reduce that pattern so that it has a degree of randomness in it, um, where it's otherwise mostly, this is a great example actually, where it's otherwise mostly uh, a gradient, but then in some cases it has some variability to it. Okay, so I'm going to build that into this definition as well. <clears throat> um, so in order to get me started, I'm first going to look at the order that these points are going to be read. So I'm going to display the points list. So under uh, display and vector, I'm going to use points list. And so I'm going to read the points here with a slider 0 to 5. Whoa really big. Maybe I need a decimal slider. So 0 to 0.55 to 2. There we go. Okay. So here's what I'm finding. Um, the, the order of points is reading um, basically this, the hypotenuse is I guess you would consider that your U axis, your U direction, where everything is complete. Um, and then it kind of starts to fall and taper off to your 10 point um, row, which is in the center right here. Okay, so this has 10 index, or yeah, 10 index values in that list, which is interesting because it should have some zeros. That's odd, very odd. Let me see something. So all the zeros are null. That's funny. That's a little curious to me. I don't know why the zeros are null. But anyway, um, so what I could potentially do is is go through this list and pull out the um, the items that are just included without the null values. Okay, so that's going to help. So if I flatten this right now. Um, let me flatten it on the points input side so that you can just see what it's going to do. So basically, the list is going to read 
those null values in random places. Uh, ooh, I can't flatten that. Hold on. Um, let me do it here. I just want to show you. You don't have to do this part. There we go. All right, so notice how we have all of these null values here, and occasionally there are points. So just like we did the other day, in order to simplify this giant, giant list of points, I can, I can dispatch and get rid of the null values if I wanted. Um, but I pro actually, I probably shouldn't do that. I should use the call, or I should use, yeah, I'll do it this way. So I'm going to go to um, set and list, and I think we do have to test the null, test for the null um, or invalidity. And so basically when I plug these points in right here, um, it's telling me that certain ones are true, certain ones um, are false. So yeah, so it's, it's basically kind of picking them out. And so I can then um, dispatch the values based off of that particular pattern. So when I go back into list and I use dispatch, I'm going to use the, um, the true if item is null pattern to dispatch this list of points. And so now I've got all of my null values up here and I've got my um, false or my uh, point values here. Okay, so that's for a flattened list though. That means that all 1,478 of these points are going to be read together. Um, so if I don't flatten it, you'll see that it, it still will work, but it's going to be grouped. So notice how now it says 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, blah, blah, blah. Um, but my actual point values are here. And it starts off 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So let's check that the points are reading properly um, for each of my panels before we move forward. So here I'm going to go back into display. I don't know why I deleted it. I shouldn't have deleted it. I'm going to uh, use a points list. I'm going to go to um, these points. Whoa. 0 less than 0.55 less than 2. There we go. So now it's reading something that I can actually use. Let me turn some of this old stuff off. Uh. OK, so uh, the first value is 0, second value is 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. OK, is that clear? You understand why you need to do that, just to clean up the values a little bit? <clears throat> okay, so then um, the other thing that you need to consider is whether or not you want to break the, the patterns, whether or not you want to break the patterns uh, as they are. So I'm going to start off just using my pattern um, just like this. If you want to break them into individual panels, we can do that separately. I think that's a little bit more advanced. We're not going to go there yet. But anyway, um, so the circles that I'm going to apply now are not going to be placed on, um, they're not going to be placed on each of the points that are coming out from the original list. They're going to be placed on, on these points. However, these points have been culled out to get rid of the, the false values which essentially means I also have to cull out the, the vectors in order to get the counts to match. So we can do that by dispatching the vectors list using exactly the same null uh, pattern. So I'm going to copy and paste dispatch down here. <clears throat> and I'm going to use that same pattern but I'm going to plug in the normals into the list instead. And so instead of 
the old normals being plugged into N, I'm going to plug in the new normals here. And then I'm going to connect the circles output from here. So then now I'll turn this back on so we can see what it looks like. And there you go. So your list should look something like this, depending on how big and how many subdivisions you've created. You should have, you know, a rather high number of total values, but each of your groups should grow. It should say 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like that. And then if, you're, if you could see long enough, it would go back down to 0. Do you guys have any questions so far? Okay, so I'll give you guys a moment to get caught up and I'll verify that you're still here bef or that you're caught up with me before we just move on to the scale factor. What's that? I know, I was saying I was here. Oh, okay. All right, uh, we'll also take a break now too. So let's take a 10, 15 minute break.